Hey guys, it's Max Kavexti. Got a special report for you today that I'm excited about telling you about. We're going to talk a little KQQ if that's all right with you guys. All right, so the good news is KQQ paid a dividend. That's the first thing we're going to start with. Now, the bad news is it was only eight cents, uh, eight and a half cents. But uh, in, the really bad news is it's trading for 25 bucks right now. So if it pays this much every month, then hopefully it's going to pay more. This was just a, they didn't sell many calls this month, but we'll see. Uh, Howard just told me it's going to pay between six and 12%. Anyway, this, this rate that they're paying right here, let's just figure it out real quick. Eight times 12 is 96 cents. So let's just round it up to a dollar. So they pay a dollar on 25. Well, a dollar on 20 is 5%. A dollar on 25 is 4%. All right, four percent. So yeah, not real impressive so far. But there's the other, there's the other payments. If you want to check your fund, there, the highest paying one was uh, NFLP, the Netflix fund. All right. Well, today I wanted to talk about. I wanted to kind of review their positions and see how they're doing. And since it's the day they pay the dividend, it's a good day to take a look at it. I've been pulling their positions down once a week, and I want to kind of evaluate the trading strategy. Um, all right. So this these these guys, it's relatively new. Like I was saying, it's three weeks old. It's actually a month old now at this point. This is the fourth week, right? All right. So um, he, he told me he was going to pay 6 to 12%. So this is probably an unusually low dividend. Hopefully... Then he, with any luck, maybe it'll go up from here. But I really think this fund would be a better fund if he could figure out how to make it pay 12%, but or 10% maybe. Well, anyway, he did he is saying six to twelve. So anyway, we'll see. We'll give we'll give him a chance. All right. So I want to look today and see what stocks K Triple Q holds for its underlines. And then mainly I want to compare it to uh FEPI. I'll also talk about the option strategy they're using and how it's a return enhancing strategy as opposed to a yield enhancing strategy. In, in option strategy world, you can either enhance the yield or the return, but not not both. Uh, That's my experience. All right. And also, I built a special buffer report and I showed it on my daily update. Uh, you guys might have seen that already, but if not, I'm going to show it again. On this one, I featured the special K Triple Q buffer report on the daily covered collar. All right, so let's look at the underlines and compare it to FEPI. So I'm going to bring up FEPI right here. FEPI also has 15 holdings. I have a C. Uh, all right, hopefully you guys can see that. I've already recorded this once, but this part was not able to be seen. Okay, good. You can see it this time. Now, you, here are the stocks that are in FEPI. And the first thing I want to say is they're equal weighted. Whereas KQQ, they're momentum weighted. So you have some that he has 8 or 9% and some he has 2 or 3%. All right, but it's the same amount of stocks. <clears throat> okay, so FEPI has Salesforce, Palo Alto Networks, Intel, Micron, and those are not on K Triple Q, but all the rest of them are common. And K Triple Q has a few that aren't on. Uh, that aren't on FEPI, and we can look at those right here to make a special spreadsheet just to follow K Triple Q. Like I said, I was pulling the the positions down once a week, so let's go over to the most current positions and see which ones they have that that the that. FEPI doesn't have. So right off the bat, I see they have Qualcomm and Oracle.
Feppy d- does not have those. They have Cisco, which I did not see in Feppy. Also, I don't know if Feppy had AMD and Broadcom. I think Feppy did have Broadcom. Yeah, there's Broadcom. Did they have AMD? Oh, yeah, they did. Okay. I think the rest are common then. I think the the, the it's Oracle and uh, I think it comes down to Oracle and Broadcom. Not Broadcom. I said that wrong. Oracle and Intel. I'm sorry. It comes down on this one to Micron. Micron, Intel, Palo Alto, and Salesforce. Okay, so I wanted to show you guys this. So when they first started off, they used some synthetics and they used some shares. So I had to make a... I, I, so I put the shares in one column and I put the synthetics over here. So one synthetic is worth 100 shares. So this is actually, they have 800 shares equivalent in synthetics. And then they have 864 actual shares. In any event, I uh, we added up and totaled up. And at this point, they still had 38. This was the first week, maybe the first day or something, or the second day. They still had 38% cash. Now they only have 10%. So they were still building their positions here. But I'm mainly interested in the covered call selling because that's what pays the yield, which is the part I'm interested in primarily. So, and it's the part that's, that the strategy, changing the strategy affects more, I would say. So they sold calls on AMD and Cisco and, and not very many of them. And I made the comment at the time, they're going to be able to pay a very high dividend. Well, by the second week, they picked it up. Because by the second week, they'd added some more shares and some more synthetics to, to Apple, to all of them. They they added, they had less cash by this point. And now they have uh, calls, covered calls on AMD, Cisco, and uh, Facebook. And then I pulled it again today. And now they have even less, or well, I've pulled it four times. Anyway, I got this like a week ago. And they had a lot of cover calls about a week ago. They had AMD, Amazon, Cisco, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, NVIDIA. And then they had Qualcomm. Okay, but then now the market started rallying. And that I pulled this just today and they don't have as many, which is good. It, it would actually worry me that they loaded up so many. I had so many of them last week. Uh but but if you look, if you look there, they still had about half, uh, a little bit less than half their positions unencumbered. They had Tesla, Oracle, Netflix, Broadcom, Applied Materials, Adobe, and Apple unencumbered by calls. So about half and half. Any event, by by this week, they took off some of the calls, or maybe they got them. They may have got may have got the stock called away. Uh, they don't release. One thing I was going to say. They do not release uh, daily trades, intraday trades or whatever. So I just have to get the positions. And when they give me the positions, they just give it to me like this. They just tell me everything. That's Apple. The top line is Apple shares. But then the second line is an Apple call. And then there's an Apple put. But I consolidate it over here so it's easier to read. All right. So right now at this point in time, as far as they have Apple shares and synthetics, they have Microsoft shares and synthetics, they have NVIDIA shares and synthetics, everything else, they're just holding shares. Once again, the co- covered calls they have open, uh, as of the time I pulled this report, they have AMD and they and they wrote pretty much all of them, Amazon and they wrote all of them, Cisco and they wrote all of them, Facebook, they wrote all of them, uh, yeah, they wrote all of them on Microsoft. So that's their plan. It looks like they're writing all when they write, but they don't write them on all the stocks. It's an interesting idea. Like I said, I just wish they could figure out how to pay 1% a month. I think that's kind of the, that's, that's where the real, that's where high yield begins or 10, 10%. When you get into double digits, that's the, to me, that's where high yield starts. 
not that that's the only way to invest, but that's kind of what we focus on here at this station. And we also focus on option strategies generally. So we can damn sure talk about that. Now, let's go look at the special buffer report. You guys set through the boring part. Here's the more interesting part. Um, what I did here is I made a grid. I used the Corey grid system. I, I just copied this from uh, something she made for me. These are her formulas. They're awesome. Um, but in any event, uh, but well, then I had to use my own because I, I made, I had to make it where it adjusts for the dividends. And so you have to know what the cumulative dividend is. So that's in this column. And then over here, I have the change from since inception, the since inception change. And then on this page, I have a chart of the since inception change. And you guys will be happy to hear that our hero, K Triple Q, is killing it. It's it's up. It's not only positive. It's the only one positive, including the freaking benchmark, which is the NASDAQ. That's impressive. And... Uh, you know, it's above JEPQ, which is great. It's it's above all of them. It's above why I have an error here, obviously. Um, the benchmark, how did that happen? So that's NASDAQ. So that one right there. Let's go back to let's look at the let's look at this. So we'll just look at the bottom line. So the NASDAQ was down. Okay. K triple Q was up half a percent. Second place was NASDAQ. It was down just fractionally, 17 bits. Third place was was JEPQ. Fourth place was FEPI. So FEPI was the other JEPQ. FEPI is FEPI is going to be red. And then down five point twelve was YMAG. So this is YMAG. So. So then in last place would be Y max, right? Just by elimination, process of elimination. All right. Thanks for uh, sticking with me while I fix that. But anyway, I think that's pretty interesting and pretty instructive. And we'll take a look at that. I have you noticed what, what, what I always call the high power ones, which I'm going to say is, well, all these are high powered. But, but you notice the high power ones barely have any buffer or they don't have buffer. The high power ones all outperform the NASDAQ on the way down. Think about that. That's not good. That would never happen from Defiance. Defiance does not do that. Um, neither does Yieldmax really, because they're they're more the high that well, they don't, because they're the high, you can either have a high buffer fund, high yield fund, or you can have a high performance fund. But the higher the NAV performance of the fund, the, the more volatile it is. The more it goes up and the more it goes down. But anyway, you can really see it here when, you know, FEPI was down 11.83% when even the freaking NASDAQ was only down 10%. Now, it's not the end of the world, but it's just something you should be aware about uh, or aware of. There's trade-offs because they, these will go up a lot more during a bull market. Of course, we saw we saw what's happened. I'm not saying anything bad about these, but I'm just saying it's interesting notice. So on these, let's say which one was the safest. And the safest on here was actually JEPQ. But the riskiest was YMAX and FEPI. <clears throat> At least uh, over this, you know, three to four week period. So, so take that with the grain of salt, right? All right. Let's see what else we have to talk about. We've talked about the buffer report. All right, I guess that's it. Please consult your own planner on this and everything else that you see on the internet. If you like this type of content and would like to support the channel, it'd be greatly appreciated. I have my PayPal at the bottom of the screen and it's on the YouTube station. Or it's on my YouTube front page, I guess I should say. All right, guys. I appreciate you all for being here. You have a great day.